Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam rasulullah. You're listening to Islam tomorrow. I want to talk about some recent events that have been taking place with regard to the Quran and how non-Muslims are viewing the Quran, what they think about the Quran, and what we can do as Muslims to show them, uh, you know, the importance of the Quran and how we view it, what our you know what our needs are as regards our holy book and then how they should approach the Quran as well and um, basing this off of the free publicity that we're getting all over the world right now from a series of events that have been taking place as has been going on for a number of years that I'm aware of but now it's finally coming to light in the last 15 years that I've been a Muslim I've seen a lot of things that people have done non-Muslims have done to try to show Islam in a bad way to try to show Muslims uh, in a bad light and try to present the Quran and the message of the Quran in a negative or derogatory manner and in the beginning I, I didn't realize how serious it was I didn't have you know the knowledge and the information that I have now and I realize that this is not something small this is something that each Muslim should take to heart and heavy consideration to know to educate themselves to find out what Islam is actually teaching and saying and then what is being said about Islam and what's being misrepresented and then what is the proper way according to Islam to rectify and correct this situation and that's the subject I want to speak about right now now specifically some of you have been hearing what's been going on down in Cuba at Guantanamo Bay the prisoners who have been detained there and some things that have happened to their books now what you can do is go online and read this for yourself uh, MSNBC has a whole story here about what the Pentagon is admitted to now this yesterday afternoon uh, at closing time they released the whole story uh, uh, at least uh, a, a large story talking about what has happened to different uh, Qurans there at Guantanamo Bay and even in other places they've admitted to nine I believe nine cases of uh, you know bad conduct toward the Quran and uh, there's a number of other cases that are under question and they're still trying to determine did this happen or did that happen all this flies in the face of uh, you know the situation which took place with Newsweek which was really condemned all over the place by the United States government for releasing a story about the exact same topic and then they were forced to retract it to apologize and everything uh, and they said they had it on good source but yet they were forced you know to to retract it in the meantime some people died people died because of that story that came out in Newsweek because people were out there in the streets saying you know can't do this can't do that and some people killed them for standing up for the Quran and now they're saying yeah that did happen hmm uh, maybe they want to get some more people killed I don't know but this is not good this is certainly not what we're after and I want to mention that this is not new and you're only talking about one place you're talking about Guantanamo Bay you're talking about people that are being detained there uh, that are being tied in with some acts of uh, retaliation against the United States government when we approached and went into Afghanistan I say we meaning of course the United States but there are a lot of other cases out here that <laughs> nobody's talking about nobody's ever mentioned these and there's a I've been working as a federal prison chaplain for the United States government as a contractor since about 1994 and in, in those years I have seen a lot of things and I heard a lot of things I personally have watched as non-employees now these are not employees of the prisons okay I want to be sure you understand that before I go any further but they were people who were contracted in there who were uh, providing religious services for the Christians okay and I did watch them actually take 
materials that I had brought, including the Quran translates into English, and destroy them. At a time when, I, you know, I really couldn't afford to give away Qurans, but I would take what little money we had and go out and buy some Qurans and bring them there for those who were members of the Islamic faith, in other words, the Muslims. And I would store them in a special place that was provided for me there. And when I come back, I look and it's, they've all been destroyed. Now, sometimes they would just take them. Sometimes they would throw them away. But the point was that they were not theirs, and it wasn't at their discretion, but yet they would do this to some way they thought to stop Islam from spreading. Islam was spreading very fast, very rapidly, throughout that particular unit there in San Antonio, Texas. And the more that they tried to do things like that, <laughs> strangely enough, the more people would find out things that were going on, and they would want to know about Islam, and they would come to Islam if I'm to do that. And this is really going to be the summation of what I'm going to say as, as far as regarding what we should do. Now, should we get mad and take out uh, their Bible and throw it on the ground and trash it? Of course not. No Muslim would do that. In fact, it was stated real clear by some of those who didn't have any knowledge whatsoever about Islam or the Quran. They said that we were stupid because we were burning the Muslims. Now I'm speaking about Muslims. Muslims were burning the flag of the United States in various places around the world because of this uh, desecration and disrespect toward the Quran. They said, well, are these people stupid? Why did they burn the United States flag? Why didn't they burn a Bible? And the point was here, real clear, even though they don't understand it, it's clear for the Muslims that it's not the Bible that's attacking the Quran. It's not the Christians that are attacking the Quran in this case. What is it? These are non-believers who have no disregard, uh, no respect and total disregard, that is to say, for all holy books. I'm sure they would do the same to the Bible. If, if somebody got in their way, they wouldn't have any problem doing that to the Bible or to the Torah or to anybody's holy book. The Hindu Sanskrit would not matter to them. These are not people of faith. People of faith don't do that. Real people of faith, even though they don't agree with other faiths, they still have a respect to allow other people to practice their faith, to enjoy what they like to believe and do what they want to do about it. And this is the attitude of the good Muslim as well. We do not blaspheme against the Bible. We consider it wrong in Islam for people to even take the translation of the English Bible into the bathroom. We consider taking it even into the bathroom to read, to be a, a, a sin. I'm talking about the Bible. And of course that goes the same for the Quran, because we have a respect for these books. Now other people, if they own a Bible and they take it in there, we don't like it, but it's their Bible. And if somebody owns a Quran and they bought a Quran and they take it in the bathroom, that's uh, nothing we can do about it, but we would tell them this is wrong, you shouldn't do that. But to take the Quran itself and to desecrate it, to do something against the Quran, is a horrible thing because this person is showing that they are ignorant and how are they any different from people who just burn books because it disagrees with their thinking or their their concepts or whatever they're all about this is wrong and it's not a good approach and we cannot as they say fight fire with fire we Muslims are far above that and uh, the fact that some Muslims did burn the United States flag was maybe, uh, I think, a, a sign that they're saying that, look, we know that it's the United States government who's behind this thing, and, or at least agents working for them. And so uh, we're not burning the Bible because we're not blaming the Christians, but we are saying that this is something that, you know, the United States should not allow to be done. And they're right in that regard to say that now as far as burning the flag that's that's another matter i don't think that you achieve a lot by burning people's flags but sometimes you get the attention you want and i don't know I mean, it's your flag and if you burn it what can anybody say even americans here in our country have burnt the flag 
And it's against the law, actually, in the United States to burn the United States flag, but nobody enforces that anymore. And I remember when I was a Boy Scout leader that people would do things like that, and we really hated it. And we would tell them, you know, this is wrong to burn the flag, but, you know, they'd say, well, I bought it, it's my flag, I'll do it as I darn well please with it. Some people made clothing out of the flag. They made hats out of it, shirts out of it. Some of them made underwear out of the United States flag. Others did uh, make, like, uh, bikini, uh, you know, swimsuits, things like this. These things are, I, I, I think, disrespectful. I think that's, uh, the, the, at best, it's disrespectful and at its worst, it, it's uh, provocative to the extent that you, you cause people to want to respond to you when you do things like that. So just as a good American would not like to see the flag burned, and a good Christian would not like to see the Bible ripped up or thrown around, and a good Muslim, obviously, would not like to see this done to the Quran. The people who do these kinds of things, you have to understand two things about them. One, they have, they have no respect. They have no concern or respect. And two, they are trying to provoke something out of you. They want you to react so that they have an excuse to come in and do even more things to you. You know, it, it wouldn't be right if you went into court and here's a man standing that's been all beat up, you know, and he said, okay, that man beat me up, and the man said, yeah, I beat him up. Why? I just felt like beating him up. Well, obviously he'd go to jail, right? <laughs> he has no defense. But if the man was all beaten up and he said, well, this man beat me up, and they said, well, what did he do to you? Well, yeah, well, he kicked me. Oh, okay, well, you kicked him. That's why he beat you up. He said, yeah, but... You know, this man was uh, scratching my car, so I jumped out and kicked him. We said, well, then he beat him up. So, you know, the story is longer and more involved. So they do one thing to provoke another thing to provoke another and another till they can get you in trouble and cause a bigger problem. It becomes, you know, a situation for the Muslims to look at it like this. We as Muslims, we love the Quran. And many Muslims are willing to die for the Quran. And not very many people are willing to die, really, for the Bible today. I'm sorry to say that. That's sad, but true. But there are more people willing to die for the Quran than there are people willing to die for the United States flag. And I will tell you that's a fact because we have 1.5 billion Muslims in the world and every one of them shares the same sentiment about the Quran. Whereas we only have 270 million Americans and I'll guarantee you not even half of them are willing to put their life on the line for our flag, for the Stars and Stripes. So certainly there's a, a big counterbalance here that we all need to look at as far as this population goes. But that's not really what we're all about. This is not what we're into. We're not trying to say that this is an approach. What we're trying to say is that there should be a concern on all non-Muslims everywhere that there is a book out there called the Quran and they need to look into it. Now here's what we propose. This is what we're saying and I, and I hope that others will agree with me in this and if not, at least tell me why you don't agree with my idea. Now let me know some better way to do something here. But my idea is to provide a Quran to anybody anywhere on this planet who even remotely is interested to know what it is about this Muslim book that's so interesting, that makes it so valuable to a Muslim that he's willing to put his life on the line for it. So if they want to know, I say let's give them a Quran in a language they can understand. Presently, we offer it on our website absolutely free as a download. In fact, I was looking at our numbers today on that page. We've had a number of people, you know, who are using search engines coming to our website looking for a free Quran. Well, that's a good idea. And we want them to. Actually, we want them to go to that page and we want them to look for this Quran. We want them to download that. And then if they don't have that capability, if they just want to order it, we have maybe... Uh, had about a thousand of them around here, but we've still got quite a few. We're willing to send them out. We'll even pay for the postage. So if you know people that would like one, we'll, we're willing to send one per family here in the United States. And then if you know some in other countries and you know somebody who wants to sponsor the postage, 
to those countries, let me know. We'll make arrangements and we'll send those anywhere they want to go. Now, this we're talking about English. English translation only. I'm not talking about Arabic. Arabic's another subject. But if they want to...